You're at least 40. This conference is for young innovators, not people trying to relive their glory days. The registration clerk announced loudly, waving away my conference badge while a line of hoodie-clad 20-somethings snickered behind me. The irony hit like a sledgehammer. They were all here to worship at the altar of the Phoenix framework, the revolutionary programming architecture I'd created in my garage five years ago. They just didn't know Phoenix's creator was the old lady they were laughing at. But in exactly 37 minutes, when the mysterious keynote speaker failed to appear, they were about to find out why age was just a variable in the code of innovation. My name is Diana Castellano, and at 43, I'd apparently aged out of my own revolution. Standing at the entrance to TechNext 2024, Silicon Valley's most exclusive conference for young disruptors, I watched my work being gatekept by people who couldn't have written a line of my code if their startup funding depended on it. There must be a mistake, I said calmly, holding up my phone with the registration confirmation. I have a full access pass. The clerk, Marcus, according to his badge, barely glanced at it. Yeah, these system glitches happen. But come on, be realistic. The average age here is 26. Maybe try the Senior Developers Symposium? I heard they're doing something on COBOL maintenance. The 20-somethings behind me burst into laughter. One of them, wearing a t-shirt that said move fast and break things, added helpfully. My mom's about your age. She just learned how to use Instagram. I smiled tightly, tucking my laptop bag closer. Inside was the computer that had birthed Phoenix, the framework that powered half the applications these young innovators had built their careers on. Also inside, the Phoenix 2.0 update that would revolutionize programming again, if I decided to release it. Listen, lady, Marcus continued, already looking past me to the next person in line. I don't make the rules. Tech Next is about the future, not the past. No offense, but what could someone your age possibly contribute to cutting-edge innovation? I stepped aside, pulling out my phone. You're right. What could I possibly know? As I walked toward the side entrance, I heard them still laughing. One voice carried clearly. Probably wanted to attend her kid's presentation or something. Helicopter parenting at its finest. The conference center hummed with energy. Through the glass walls, I could see the main stage being prepared for the keynote. Banners everywhere proclaimed Phoenix Framework, the future of code, and meet the mystery creator. For five years, I'd maintained anonymity, letting my work speak for itself. The tech world had assumed Phoenix's creator was a young male prodigy, probably dropping out of Stanford or MIT. The myth had grown with each iteration, each breakthrough. I found a coffee shop across the street with a clear view of the conference center. Opening my laptop, I pulled up my admin access to Phoenix's core systems. 28 minutes until the keynote. 28 minutes until Marcus and his young innovators realized their mysterious genius wasn't coming. Because she was already here, drinking overpriced coffee and watching them panic. My phone buzzed. Sarah Martinez, my former colleague, and one of the few who knew my identity. They're freaking out. The Phoenix creator hasn't checked in. Board members are losing their minds. Imagine that, I typed back. Diana, stop playing. You need to get in there. They were very clear. I'm too old to contribute to cutting-edge innovation. That's bullshit and you know it. I sipped my coffee, watching through the window as conference organizers scurried around like ants whose hill had been kicked. My laptop screen showed the Phoenix Framework's real-time usage stats. 847,000 active applications, 3.2 million developers, processing 400 billion requests per hour. All running on code architecture I developed while these young innovators were still in high school. The funny thing about ageism in tech, it assumes innovation has an expiration date. That the same brain that could revolutionize programming at 38 suddenly becomes obsolete at 43. Never mind that I'd written Phoenix after 20 years of experience taught me what younger developers couldn't see. That true innovation comes from understanding not just what's possible, but what's practical. My phone rang. Unknown number. Ms. Castellano? The voice was panicked. This is Jennifer Walsh, CEO of TechNext. We have a situation. Our keynote speaker. The mysterious Phoenix creator? I interrupted. Let me guess. They're not coming. How did you never mind? We're desperate. Do you know anyone who could speak about the Phoenix framework? Anyone with deep technical knowledge? We have 2,000 attendees. Including me, I said. Or rather, not including me. Your registration staff was very clear that 43-year-olds don't belong at an innovation conference. Silence. 
Then, I'm sorry, what? Diana Castellano. I tried to check in 40 minutes ago. Marcus explained that I was too old for Tech Next. Something about COBOL maintenance being more my speed. There must be a misunderstanding. No misunderstanding. But I have a proposition. I can solve your keynote problem. I happen to know quite a bit about Phoenix. You do? How much would you charge? We'll pay anything. I don't want money. I want a public apology from Marcus, an age discrimination policy review, and a guarantee that every attendee over 40 gets free admission to all future TechNext events. That's, I'll need to discuss. You have 15 minutes before your keynote slot. Decide quickly. I hung up. Through the window, I watched Jennifer Walsh sprint across the conference floor, her phone pressed to her ear. My laptop pinged. Someone was trying to access Phoenix's master controls, probably attempting to create a presentation without the creator. I smiled, typing a few commands. Every Phoenix-powered application in the conference center suddenly displayed. Waiting for authorization. My phone exploded with texts. Sarah, what did you do? Teaching a lesson, I replied. The conference doors burst open. Jennifer Walsh ran out, followed by several board members and, yes, Marcus from registration. They scanned the street frantically until Jennifer spotted me through the coffee shop window. Two minutes later, they crowded around my small table. Marcus looked like he'd swallowed a lemon. Ms. Castellano, Jennifer gasped. Please, we accept your terms. All of them. Excellent. Marcus, I believe you have something to say. His face cycled through several colors. I apologize for my ageist assumptions and discriminatory behavior. Louder, please. And look me in the eye. He met my gaze, his voice stronger. I was wrong. I judged you based on age instead of ability. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Now, about that keynote. I stood, closing my laptop. The Phoenix applications throughout the conference center immediately resumed normal operation. I'll need five minutes to set up. We crossed the street together, the board members practically vibrating with anxiety. As we entered through the main doors, the same ones I'd been barred from, whispers followed our path. Who was this middle-aged woman being escorted by the CEO? Backstage, Jennifer handed me a microphone. The creator, they're really not coming? Oh, they're here, I said, pulling up my presentation. They've been here all along. The lights dimmed. Jennifer took the stage to nervous applause. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special surprise. The creator of the Phoenix Framework will be speaking after all. The crowd erupted. Phones came out, ready to capture the moment they'd meet their hero. The young genius. The disruptor. The prodigy. Please welcome, Jennifer continued, glancing at me in the wings. Diana Castellano. I walked onto the stage to confused silence. The sea of young faces looked bewildered. Someone actually said, loud enough for the microphone to catch, Is she the creator's mom? Good morning, I said, connecting my laptop to the main screen. I'm Diana Castellano, and I created the Phoenix Framework. I know I don't look like what you expected. I'm 43, I shop at Target, and yes, I do know how to use Instagram. Thank you very much. Nervous laughter rippled through the crowd. Five years ago, I was told I was too old to get hired at any major tech company. Culture fit was the excuse, but we all know what that meant. So I decided to build something myself. Phoenix was born from two decades of experience, countless failures, and the understanding that comes from actually living through multiple tech revolutions. I pulled up my code editor. Now, who wants to see Phoenix 2.0? The screen filled with elegant code structures that made several developers in the front row gasp. Phoenix 2.0 introduces quantum-resistant encryption, AI-assisted optimization, and performance improvements of 400%. But here's the thing. I couldn't have built this at 25. I needed every year of experience, every failure, every hard-won lesson. I walked to the edge of the stage. This morning, I was told I was too old to innovate. That at 40... I should be maintaining COBOL instead of creating the future. But innovation doesn't have an age limit. It requires experience, wisdom, and the perspective that comes from years of solving real problems. The demo continued, each feature revelation earning more amazed reactions. When I showed the migration tool that could update any Phoenix 1.0 application instantly, the room erupted in applause. But here's my favorite part, I said, pulling up one final screen. Phoenix 2.0 is free for educational use, with one requirement. Any institution using it must prove they have age-diverse development teams. 
No more culture fit discrimination. No more assuming innovation belongs only to the young. A hand shot up from the audience. It was the move fast and break things shirt guy from earlier. Ms. Castellano, I. I was one of the people laughing earlier. I'm sorry. How do we? How do we do better? Start by questioning your assumptions, I said. Pair program with someone 20 years older or younger than you. Learn from their perspective. And remember that the old developer you're dismissing might be the one who builds the tool that defines your entire career. Another hand. Will you be hiring for Phoenix development? Yes, I said. And I'll be specifically recruiting developers over 40 who've been told they're too old to code. Turns out, building the future requires people who actually remember the past. The keynote ended to thunderous applause. But the real satisfaction came afterward, as young developers lined up to apologize, to ask questions, to learn. Marcus found me in the speaker's lounge, looking sheepish. I've been thinking, he said. My dad's a developer, 55 years old. Companies keep passing him over for younger candidates. I never understood why that made him so angry until today. Tell him to send me his resume, I said. Phoenix is hiring, and I have a feeling someone with his experience is exactly what we need. The conference continued, but something had shifted. At lunch, I saw younger and older developers sitting together, sharing stories and code. The afternoon panels suddenly featured more diverse speakers. And every Phoenix-powered application at the conference now displayed a small banner. Built on technology created by a 43-year-old developer. Innovation has no age limit. Sarah found me as I was packing up. That was brilliant. But you could have revealed yourself any time in the last five years. Why now? Because, I said closing my laptop, the same one that had changed an industry. I finally realized that hiding my age was part of the problem. Every time we let ageism win, we rob the tech world of wisdom, experience, and the kind of innovation that only comes from truly understanding what we're building and why. A group of young developers approached nervously. Ms. Castellano, we're starting a mentorship program at our boot camp. Would you, would you consider being an advisor? On one condition, I said. You also recruit mentors who are 25, 35, 55, and 65. Innovation happens when different perspectives collide. They agreed eagerly, and I handed out my card. The one that simply said Diana Castellano, developer. Six months later, TechNext 2025's theme was innovation across generations. The keynote panel featured developers from 22 to 72, sharing how age diversity had transformed their companies. Phoenix 2.0 had been adopted by 80% of existing users, and the requirement for age-diverse teams had sparked an industry-wide conversation about ageism in tech. Marcus, now an advocate for inclusive hiring, introduced me before my talk. Last year, I thought innovation had an expiration date. Diana Castellano taught me that wisdom is the ultimate upgrade, and experience is the most valuable framework of all. I took the stage to applause my laptop, still the same trusty machine ready to unveil Phoenix 3.0. But first, I had a confession. I lied earlier. I'm not 43. I'm 44 now. Even older, even wiser, and even more ready to build the future. Who's with me? The room erupted in cheers from developers of all ages, united by code and the understanding that true innovation isn't about how many years you've lived. It's about what you've learned along the way and how you use it to lift others up. As I began coding live on stage, showing features that would once again revolutionize development. I thought about that morning at the registration desk. Being turned away was the best thing that could have happened. Not just for me, but for an entire industry that needed to remember that the future isn't built by dismissing the past, but by bridging it with the present. And sometimes, it takes a 40-something developer with a laptop and a point to prove to debug an entire culture.